Welcome to number seven in this series of short lectures on statistical quality assurance and statistical process improvement. We're discussing measurement and its interaction with the basic formulas of elementary statistics. Uh, we'll build up beyond that as we go along, but here early in this uh, course we're, we're thinking about how the, the, the formulas from basic statistical analysis are affected by measurement error and how they help quantify measurement error. In particular in this module we're going to think about a situation where one has a first sample and a second sample and wishes to make comparisons based on those two samples. One kind of comparison that is possible is to think about the mechanism that generates sample one, the mechanism that generates sample two, and wish to compare the means of those samples, say mu1, means of those generating mechanisms, mu1 and mu2. Another possibility is to want to compare the variability of those two data generating mechanisms as quantified by say standard deviation one and standard deviation two. Uh, turning first to the means, there is this standard formula of elementary statistics that says take a difference in sample means and hedge that by some kind of approximate t value times the square root of the sum of the sample variances over the sample sizes. That square root is a, is a standard error for the difference in y bar 1 and y bar 2. The usual recommendation for making that t multiple is to use uh, an quote-unquote approximate degrees of freedom based on what's known as a Satterthwaite approximation. Uh, there is a commonly recommended formula uh, that's not altogether fun to use. Uh, a conservative version of that is to simply use uh, a degrees of freedom that is the smaller of sample size number one minus one and sample size number two minus one. Uh, that will be adequate for most purposes and in fact is what we will use for those of you who are uh, taking STAT 361. For purposes of comparing standard deviations, one begins with a ratio of sample standard deviation one to sample standard deviation two and basically hedges that by a multiplier that on the left side here turns out to be uh, less than one and a multiplier on the right side that turns out to be larger than one and these things are based on the so-called F distributions. Uh, if these formulas seem unfamiliar to you, uh, you need to uh, go back to a basic statistics text and review them. Uh, we're going to simply take them as known and given and see how uh, they forward our cause of understanding uh, how sources of physical variation interact with a data collection plan and how they help us understand what a practical importance can be learned from a data set, and in particular how measurement error is reflected in that data set. A first scenario that uh, we can use in this, in this program is this one, illustrated in a cartoon that says there's some measure and that is observed through a pair of measurement devices. So here what we're essentially doing is trying to make some kinds of comparisons between measurement device number one and measurement device number two. Uh, if one can do multiple measurements of uh, 
the measure end using device number one. Uh, one gets a first sample, multiple measurements of the measure end using device number two give a second sample. Those samples can be processed into sample average and sample standard deviation. Uh, those become the basis of applying the formulas of elementary statistical inference. The thing to understand or to recognize about this cartoon is that for the upper branch here, one is generating data that has mean measure in plus the bias of device number one and has standard deviation that is uh, entirely due to measurement variation for device number one. So we'll call that stand sigma for device one. Whereas the second sample is being generated by a mechanism that has mean measure in plus second device bias and has inherent variability that we'll call sigma for device number two. With that in mind, remembering that we have this formula, so-called two sample t formula, for estimating a difference in means, it's obvious then that the difference in mean number one and mean number two is the difference in these measure ends plus bias and by the time one does arithmetic uh, it's obvious that uh, applying the two sample t interval to data of this form gives us a way of comparing the two biases for the two uh, measurement devices. Uh, further remembering that there is uh, this second formula for comparing sigma 1 to sigma 2 that is making an estimate of the ratio of the two standard deviations. Uh, it's obvious that applying that formula in this context where we're doing multiple measurements of a single measure end with two different devices, uh, we get a way of comparing the two precisions of the uh, measurement devices. We, we can make an interval for the ratio of those two precisions. Another kind of application of those basic confidence interval formulas is to a situation where one can't actually do multiple measurements of a single measure in. Uh, there are plenty of industrial situations where uh, one makes a measurement and then the process actually destroys uh, the object uh, that has the the feature that's that, that we're we're trying to we're trying to measure. Uh, in that kind of a context, uh, the only thing that can be done if you're trying to compare the characteristics of two measurement devices is to do something like this. Uh, one might think of a process that produces a bunch of measure ends and think about running the first group of those measure ends through device number one, making measurements with device number one and running the second group of those measure ends through device number two. Uh, in that way, one has two samples that can be processed into means in standard deviations uh, and, can, and those, those values can then potentially be plugged into the elementary formulas of statistical inference. Uh, the thing to realize here is that sample number one has characteristics that are, there's a mean plus a mean for the process now, 
plus device bias number one for a mean. Sample number two has a mean that is process mean plus device bias number two. Uh, that's not just measure in plus bias, that's process mean plus bias. Uh, and standard deviations are not simply device standard deviations, but they're this uh, uh, triangle Pythagorean kind of combination of the uh, device biases, I'm sorry, the device standard deviations and the uh, process standard deviation. Uh, what that means is that if we apply the T interval, we get an interval for the difference in mu1 and mu2, that's process mean plus delta 1 minus process mean plus delta 2. I've still got a difference there that is the difference in the two device biases. Uh, so even where I can't make multiple measurements on a single measure end, uh, it's possible to do inference using this two sample methodology for a difference in uh, device, device biases. Uh, you might ask yourself, well, which should I use? Which, which cartoon is uh, the, the most attractive? Uh, the answer to that is, is, is hidden in this business of standard deviations. Uh, if you look at the standard deviations here on panel 8 and compare to the standard deviations here on panel 5, you decide that uh, the, the standard deviation on panel 8 is larger. That is, uh, there's more noise in uh, these measurements than there are in uh, the multiple measurements of a, of a single measure and and so if you can if you can do it you prefer the first method to the second method but this is a method that will work uh, even if uh, even if measurement is destructive uh, that should be completely in accord with your intuition uh, if you quickly think, well, okay, what about making uh, F intervals based on these two sample standard deviations? Well, what you get is an interval for a ratio of this to that. Uh, and that ratio is not so interpretable. Uh, it's not as easy or not as clear as a is a ratio of, of two device precisions because the process standard deviation is involved both numerator and denominator.